Hello, my name is Nolan Phillips, and I'm the representative from the state of Kentucky. Now, this is the birthplace of the town I'm from, which is Lexington, which is the second largest city in Kentucky after Louisville. It's got about 300,000 inhabitants, and this is McConnell Springs, which is actually a nature park right now. It's a nature reserve. And McConnell Springs is so named because William McConnell, who was a pioneer and explorer, and the, his followers came here and made a settlement here because of the natural freshwater springs that are just over there. Now, there are many places you can see in Lexington, and there are many things you can do in the Bluegrass region, which is the region of Kentucky where Lexington is, kind of central northern Kentucky. And um, so if you wanted to come to central Kentucky, you could see Ashland, which is very interesting. It's the estate of um, prominent Kentucky statesman Henry Clay, who lived here in the early 1800s. And um, you would be also be able to see some horse farms where a lot of thoroughbreds and a lot of Kentucky Derby winners, of course the Kentucky Derby is actually held in Louisville, but a lot of Kentucky Derby winners are from Lexington because Lexington is considered the horse capital of the world. And it's where a lot, all, I mean, an enormous amount of thoroughbreds are bred. So um, there's also a fairly famous racetrack here called Keeneland, so you can see a race there. And in the general region, there are some very interesting things to see, um, geologically speaking, on the Kentucky River. Now, the Kentucky River does not go through Lexington. It goes through Frankfort, which is the state capital. But Lexington is not actually on any type of water body. The vast majority of the bread rock here is made of limestone. So there are a lot of karsts, there are a lot of, um, which are, you know, it's a um, watery underground limestone area. And there are a lot of underground caves. Next to the Kentucky River, there are some palisades, which are very interesting. They're like steep, very steep, sometimes sheer cliffs um, that are carved out by the river. The place probably that I would like to go most in the world, or it would be definitely towards the top of my list, would probably be the Kingdom of Bhutan, which is a small country in Central Asia in the Himalayan mountains. And Bhutan has, been, has had virtually no exposure to the modern world for a long time. And in the modern day, with the influx of you know, computers and the internet and cell phones and um, TV and modern devices, the government and the people are trying to retain a lot of their cultural heritage and they're trying to preserve their cultural heritage and they have this thing called the Gross, Na Gross National Happiness Survey, which is a survey just to see how things are going in the country. And I think, so I think the language is very pretty too in Bhutan. Um, it's, a, it's closely related to Tibetan, it's called Junka. And um, I also believe that Bhutan has some of the most beautiful natural sites in the world, as it's right at the foothills of the Himalaya Mountains. So there are a lot of beautiful things relating to the Himalayas and, um, you know, valleys and mountain valleys. So that may be, that would probably be the place in the world where I would like to go to most. All right, National Geographic. Did you know that Kiribati is the only country, it's an island country in the Pacific, and it's the only country that's right at the crosshairs of the international dateline and the equator. Which means that before 1995, when a law was passed regulating otherwise, you could travel from one island to another island in the same country and technically be in a different season on a different day.